Because if you take yourself seriously as a writer, as a musician, as an artist, as a curator, one of the first investments you should be making is sitting right in front of you. And I don't work for Apple. And I was teased on PCs. Windows Vista was the best thing that ever happened to Apple. It was a terrible operating system. When they went to Windows 7, they won me back. They went to Windows 8. I had my Windows 8 computer all of seven minutes. And I took it back. Now they're wooing me back with Windows 10. But it was Vista that got me using a Mac and realizing the power in your own technology. Because if you take yourself seriously as an artist, this tool will give you all you need to present yourself to three-fifths of the world's population quicker than you can blink your eyes. So it's more than just sitting down and doing word processing, PowerPoint presentations. We're going to be learning about the ways that computers can and will shape your career, and you can choose not to. And I'll take your $120 an hour to set up your website or your blog you do your business cards, or you can learn to do it yourself. And I need to know, and it's just to get a, a, a basic startup point, how many here, this is the, you, you're, you haven't used computers before? Anyone here has never used computers? So you're pretty fresh yeah. to computer. I like that. It's, you know, it's a really good place to be. Because what that does is it allows you to start from a place of no bad habits. I mean, I've taken a typing class before, but nothing. Really. That's before I went back to before I went back to college full time. That's the first class I took. This was back with electric typewriters. Yeah. And my first month in class, I think whoever invented correction ribbon made a killing on me. But by the time I was done with that typing class, I was typing 117 words a minute. When I typed, it sounded like you were tearing paper. Word processors actually slowed me down because they don't have the same tactile feel. But it's a good thing to know how to type. But you can use a computer without knowing how to type because this thing right here has voice recognition so good that I'm talking a book into the equivalent in this. It's called Dragon. And when we open up Microsoft Word, they're going to find out you can talk to Microsoft Word, and you don't have to be able to type. All you've got to be able to do is talk, say period, new paragraph, quotation mark, and quotation mark, comma. And that computer will type for you. It's astounding what computers do now compared to what they did when I built my first PC compatible in 1985. You built them? I built them now. They're easy. People are, I'd say, mystified by the magic they do compared to the simplicity of their design. Because you're not doing the soldering. Right? You're not building any of, the, any of the innards inside. You're just plugging parts in. Matter of fact, what you pay Geek Squad, 80 bucks to 40 bucks an hour, I'll charge you 20, and I'll do any of the upgrades you want to do on your computer. The simplicity of what they do compared to, I'm sorry, of their design as compared to what they do is what boggles a lot of people. So we'll learn about computer hardware, software. And if you use a cell phone, you got a computer, it makes phone calls. And the technology in my iPhone here is 20 times more than the technology that put someone on the moon in 1969. It's mind-blowing. This would have taken Russia down in 1985. It would have blown out their whole security system, this iPhone. But they become so much a part of our life that they are almost invisible. People use them and are really quite unaware often of the potential to be able to represent yourself to the world in blinks of an eye. 
So technology is important, but so is Kaizen. Continual improvement. No matter what you're doing, you can find a way to make it better. Whatever you do, take it seriously. Take yourself seriously. Give it your best. Anything. Because when you start to believe other people's opinions of what you do, and they are less than holding yourself to the highest standards and highest esteem, you sell yourself out. And you don't set high goals for yourself and then work together. You sell yourself out. You're still going to do a lot of work in here. So I'm going to go through some ground rules here. First off, this is a cell phone free zone. Unless there is some important reason you need to have your cell phone on or you walk into the class, turn it off and put out of reach. You're going to hear me saying stop, put the cell phone down and move away from the desk. It's also a Facebook free zone, except for approved assignments. And we are going to talk about uh, responsible use of Facebook as a professional. Because you should make a distinction between you as a professional as compared to you as the Facebook who shows you at some place having pizza or your kid with their diapers a little bit too heavy. All right, or you and your birthday, which is fun stuff. All right, but your professional Facebook page should be entirely different, distinct, and removed from your person. If you put a lot of crap on your Facebook page, and you apply to have your work in a gallery, in a show, you apply for a job, it's now fair game for that employer, that gallery manager, that show curator to go to Facebook and look at what you've got up there. And if you have really unsavory stuff, your chances of getting in that show that gallery or that job have just become greatly diminished because you can lie down with dogs. <laughs> There's also no unassigned web browsing. You'll have enough to do in Blackboard. If you have, there, I can have no food in the classroom. If you have drinks, they must have a lid or a cover, a screw down cap. Uh oh or something like that where you can actually close it. So, but it needs a lid because if you tip this over and you damage the keyboard or you damage the computer, um, it goes on your student account. No pets or kids in the classroom. You also are expected to check your email every day. Part of your responsibility as a student is to be in constant communication with the place it is. Yes, you're a student, but you're in essence your employee here. Yeah, you're going for your degree, but someone's paying for you to be here. I went through this with one of the classes. I asked how many people are getting financial aid. Show of hands, financial aid. Paying for yourself. I remember you two guys are paying for yourselves. And I said, if you're not going to show up for class, buy a car. Buy a Japanese car. Otherwise, you miss class, and you don't let me know you're going to miss class, you're stealing. You're stealing, you're stealing. So you got to check your IA email every day. You're going to know me as the NAG, Native American Gremlin. Attendance for the class is mandatory. If you're going to miss class, I expect you to email me ahead of time. If you are going to miss several classes, it means you're going to be leaving campus. Part of your job responsibility is to go to student services and get a release form for prearranged absences. Because if you do not do that and you are living on campus, you're AWOL. We are responsible for you while you're here. We are legally responsible to you when you are on our premises. If you leave without letting us know, we're still responsible for you. But if you're not going to show up for class and you don't let me know, that's disrespectful. I would let you know if I'm not going to be here. And if I'm not going to make it be here, I'd make damn sure to have someone here to fill in and I will probably have something pre-recorded so I can still rant and rave at you with just be coming over the speakers instead of the 3D. <laughs> and I wish I had one of those whole hologram recorders right now. <laughs> That's down the road, all right? Because I'd love to be here in 3D with Tupac. <laughs> <laughs> or arm and arm, Tupac and Biggie. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
come back. <laughs> Propness is mandatory. I expect you to be on time. And I said this before in another meeting, you've heard that expression, Indian time, that's such friggin' bullshit. That's learned laziness. I don't buy it. You take yourself seriously, you show up on time. I expect it, I demand it. Three times late counts as an absence, and I'll go over my attendance policy pretty soon. So we expect you to be prompt and let us know when you're going to be late and when you're going to be absent. You want to make sure that when you're done, because we're going to learn how to use our OneDrive account, cloud storage, early in the semester. Everything you've done, you want to save to your OneDrive account. And we'll go over uh, how we use this, because a lot of people want to use flash drives. And I was a strong believer in flash drives for quite a while. But when I used flash drives, I always carried three of them. Because you only have to lose everything once. And you recognize the wisdom of redundant backup. So now when I carry a flash drive, I save things to a flash drive, I still put it up to my OneDrive as well as to my Dropbox. Because cloud storage you can retrieve from anywhere in the world. As long as you can get internet connection. So I told one class, I was out in the Kalahari Desert with people like this tall. You ever seen where the gods must be crazy? Only big Bushmen? I was out with those people. And I was still able to get an internet connection with a hot spot. And the way I was able to access my documents was because I had the cloud. I didn't have to bring the stuff through customs. I didn't have to worry about losing my flash drives. All I had to do was get up into the cloud, pull my documents down. So we're going to learn about using the cloud storage here. But you're also going to save your work to OneDrive, Dropbox, and you're going to log out of your account at the end of every class. Because if you don't log out and you're signed in as you, I'm going to go in and I'm going to start sending Viagra messages to everyone on campus and it's going to come out of your email. <laughs> you leave yourself open to be happy and that includes your student records. And you might have an awards scholarship waiting there for you. Someone go into Empower and just say decline. Always, always, always sign out and then shut the machines down at the end of class. If you are using the computer labs, which are down the hall, there's several stations, there's some over in the Reichstag building, also known as the Sci Tech Center, there's computers in the library. But if you are in a lab where there is not a monitor, do not prop the doors open. Doors are supposed to say shut and lock. Because when you leave them open, strange things happen and demons appear. <laughs> and run off with stuff. So if you're using any of the labs, you're supposed to keep the doors shut. Any questions or any kind of additional information? My contact information will be on the syllabus, but this also is in, I do believe, in creative redundancy. So sfadden, iia.edu, that's my office number. Um, I'll also give you my cell number uh, before the end of class. And if you're going to call me on the cell, text me. I want to go through the syllabus now. After this week, the start here menu will be the, the module in which we are working. If you have not gone through the IAIA portal yet, there is a tutorial. And you can do download the tutorial document as well as uh, the sign-on page because the tutorial is the, and the portal are in essence is your one-stop shop that once you're logged into the portal, you can access any of the other uh, apps that are available through our website. There are also documents that I put up there for entering the course support site. So if you're having difficulty navigating through Blackboard, uh, you can take you can uh, visit this link here. But I want to click on the syllabus. So I'm going to go to the syllabus. 
So if you scroll down a course syllabus and you click to where it reads here, and I'm going to stop for just a moment because I see some computers are still uh, starting up or waiting for something to happen. If you get a mag screen telling you to sign up for Dropbox, just lift the little X box in the upper right hand side for now because that's for next week. We are going to be using the Microsoft suite of programs in particular, which means Microsoft Word, which is a word processor. It is the latest rendition of a typewriter. I guess we could say the first typewriter or typesetter was cuneiform. We then have Microsoft Excel, which allows us to work with alphanumeric data in order to perform complex operations, some of which can save you a lot of money and cost you a lot of money depending on how you use it. One of the things that we'll set up in this class will be, if you take yourself seriously as a professional and you want to make a living doing what you're doing, and you're doing a lot of contract work, you're not employing just yourself. You're employing individuals who work for a company that has three initials. What are those initials? First one's I, R, S. And if you do not calculate how much you make off of that sale or that contract and set it aside right away, come tax time, you're going to be in trouble if you can't pay your taxes. Ever heard of Wesley Snipes? Yeah. The Blade? What happened to Wesley Snipes? I did not pay his taxes. He did not pay his taxes. Where did he end up? Federal prison. Federal prison. In the prime of his career. So we'll learn how to make spreadsheets to actually condition you to think about putting money aside in anything you sell or do. And you have to do it ahead of time. And act as if it's not there. The best thing about that is if you set it aside ahead of time, It'll gather interest. So at least you'll make a little money on it in the meantime. And if you're really wild, you can even invest it and take a chance in very volatile stocks. So, and then we'll be using PowerPoint, which is the new and approved slide projector. My office hours are to be announced because I, as the director of the program, as well as I'm on call quite a bit, uh, I'll have a better idea of what my office hours are going to look like uh, inside of the second week. My office is on the second floor of a Center for Lifelong Education. It's the same building as the cafeteria. Um, if you're standing looking in the cafeteria doors and you look to the right, there is a stairwell, you go up the stairwell, you come off the stairwell and you turn to the left and there'll be a hallway directly down there. Walk two or three doors down. So that's where my office is if you ever need to track me down. The textbook we're using for the class is called Microsoft Office 2016 Step by Step. If you're getting financial aid, this should already be in the bookstore for you. So you need to have the book by Friday. Uh, so you've got to go down to the bookstore tomorrow because they're probably closed now and give them your ID and they'll give you your books for your classes because it's part of your financial aid package. Uh, so they're already there. So this is the text. And so some of the basic requirements to successfully complete this course. I expect you to attend class, to attend the assigned readings. On the very last page of the syllabus is the uh, calendar. And we are breaking the, the, the uh, semester up into eight modules, each consisting of two weeks. So within a two-week span, we cover a certain amount of material, and each module is accompanied by uh, readings from the text, and I expect you to complete the readings no later than the Wednesday of the class in which they are assigned, because you need to use the readings in order to complete your assignments, as well as comprehend some of the things I will be talking about in class. So this book comes with uh, files you can download from the internet, but I'm also going to have those same working files in each module within which we are working, so you can download them right from Blackboard and then do the assignments from that. And the assignments are going to be a combination of work files from the text as well as uh, uh, implements of your destruction designed by me to activate different principles learned in different uh, uh, chapters and modules in the class. I expect you to log into the class regularly. And I can tell when you've logged in because it lets me know last time signed in. Right to the second when you signed in. 
And it lets me know also when you signed up. And I do expect you to log into the class because that's how you're going to stay abreast of course materials and how I know you're working on course materials. I also, because I am uh, recording module lectures, should you miss something, this is not required in the face-to-face -face class because you're here. But in the online class, um, I do, but the, um, the lecture files will be there in case there's something that you missed. So I expect you to have regular, consistent attention to materials in Blackboard. There are going to be online quizzes, assignments, and projects, as well as discussions in which you will be participating. So we have the course readings and course lectures that amplify on um, uh, different uh, concepts that are addressed in the readings. There are the skills mastery assignments. Those are the things that you would download or will be running through individualized tutorials that I will be creating. Uh, the discussions occur online in the discussion area of the class, and we'll walk through on how to do that, as well as the online quizzes. The first quiz isn't going to release uh, until probably sometime mid-afternoon on Friday once I have a clear idea of who is in the class. And the quizzes are pretty much their open book. You're going to be taking them on your own. You won't be taking them in class. Cheat like crazy. Take the quiz with someone. It's like showering with a friend, all right? But take the quiz with someone. <laughs> All right, or someone that you want to work with, go ahead and take it with them. Just let me know you took it with that person. Right? In the real world, human dilemma isn't solved by people working in little cubicles, jealously guarding their information from everyone else. That's Madison Avenue. This isn't Madison Ave. Dilemma is solved by people sharing information. So if you want to work together on assignments, great. Let me know, though. Because if you both hand in the same assignment, you don't let me know you worked as a team, it looks like something else that you want to be doing in this class. And what's it called? It starts with a P. Plagiarism. So if you're going to work together, let me know. I strongly encourage working on the assignments, quizzes, and anything else together. It's all right. Teamwork. Matter of fact, absence. On absence will reduce your final grade by not 10 points, 10%. Now, absence means that it is AWOL. You're absent, you didn't let me know what was going on. But obviously, if you got a fever or a flu, I don't want you bringing it to class. That's what killed us 100 years ago. All right, so don't repeat history. Have good sense, stay home. You know, I am compassionate, but let me know. Or if you're absent, flagrant without letting me know, your grade goes by 10% right away. Two absences, final grade drops by 20%. If you're absent three times, I will drop you from the class. What happens if you lose the class? Um, you have to pay for it. You may have to pay for it, but something even worse can happen. If you're only taking 12 credits, 12 credits, what happens? Drop the Eviction. Eviction? Eviction. Eviction, yes. If you're living on campus and you're not taking full-time credit load, you're gone, as well as you're dropped from school. So I take attendance seriously. But once again, it's when it's flagrant. Lateness. Three lates equal one tardy. I'm sorry, three lates equal one absence. The assignments are time released. In other words, you will not be able to see them until I release them. So I, when I'm programming the course, I program in parameters of when it appears and when it vanishes. The online discussions, when you're participating in them, because there will be discussion questions where you'll be expected to re respond to the discussion question in your own post by at least 100 words. And this is not a place you're going to be using text messages. So LMAO is not going to work for four words. Matter of fact, if I see any texting in there, I'll delete your whole response and you get a zero. You're going to be responding in complete sentences. And then, as you respond to other people in the discussion, uh, your, your responses are expected to be at least 50 words in length. And generally, I'm not going to expect you to respond to everyone in the class because 
Uh, I mean, there's like 20 people in here, 22 people. Uh, you, you'd spend you know, a whole week just responding to people's discussions. So you select four to six, depending on the discussion question, and you'll be doing discussions about course material. Quizzes online, let's see, I've got the grade breakdown. You can read that when you open the, the syllabus on your own. I talked about, oh, plagiarism. And that occurs when you fail to um, cite someone else's ideas uh, in quotation marks, particularly when you're using um, phrases that are unique. Or if you uh, are, if you fail, if you fail to paraphrase a phrase. Now, one of the real popular ways of, of uh, plagiarizing is students will go to the internet and you're too lazy to paraphrase the source that you saw. And so they'll just copy the whole passage out, put it in their paper, and everyone's paper I read, I do random plagiarism check. I just highlight a section of text, and I plug it into Google. And 99.9999997% of the time, it will take me to the place you got it from. And then you'll get a little reminder from me Go back and put this in your own words. As I had said, by midterm, if you do not have enough points to achieve uh, at least a grade of C, I will withdraw you from the class. That's an instructor-initiated withdrawal. Report performance, and that's participation online and in class unsatisfactory progress or unacceptable behavior. I give a little section on communication etiquette. It's particularly important online, like in discussions and the like, because you don't have the person right in front of you to know sometimes whether you're joking with them. Uh, tone of voice can't come across easily in a, uh, in a text message. That's why all of those emoticons or emojis were invented. So that someone could read what type of attitude or what type of feeling you were trying to portray. And why some of the, uh, like JK stands for what? Just, just, just kidding. Right, so that someone would know that you're just playing with them, that you're not to be taken seriously. Right, so online, though, uh, please be courteous when you're discussing the ideas of other people. So the calendar. This week we're in module one, which is the course orientation. And it's going to be computer hardware, software, the internet, malware, and the introduction to Office 2016. Some of this is going to be bled into the second week. And then there is a link on the right hand side of the screen you can see that reads discussions. Click on that link. And you will see Introduce yourself to the class. You should see a screen that reads, introduce yourself to the class. And the way you will create a thread is first you look at the discussion questions. Something you might do to prompt yourself is highlight from the subject line, copy, you, so you highlight it. And then click copy, and then when you click introduce yourself to the class, you should see something that reads create thread. And then paste once you click create thread, and I'll come around in case we're having a little difficulty. And the way to paste it in there is you use the command, so you hold down the command key, and then the V. So you have a prompt. Do you know that in the posting instructions right above the message, it says the same exact part that we're copying? 
But what it allows you to do is have it right there in front of you too, so you're not having to go up and down, 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 up and down. All right, so in other words, you're going to type in your name. So up here, you might put in greetings from, and then whatever your name is. Down below, you'd want to put where you're from, what's your major, why you came here. And then if you could meet a famous artist, who would it be? And why would you want to meet that person? It could be living or dead. And then once you've got it completed, you click the submit button. Once you click submit, you should see that several people have already posted. And to respond to them, you would click on their post and then click the reply button. Read their post and respond to them. So you would type your response to them and then hit submit. 